Hi, I'm Chuck Dorsett for Weaver Leathercraft, and this is The Leather Element. If you've got a good question for us, or a good idea for a leather element, drop it in the comment box below. Closures. This is something we almost never think about. We've got kind of our basic closures, and we work with those. Unlimited possibilities. In fact, when I sat down to plan this leather element, I came up with 22 types of closures. Yeah, can't squeeze them all in one leather element. So what we're going to do today, let's do a couple of basic closures for those of us who are new, but then let's look at some we never would have thought of. In fact, our first up, right out of left field, all kinds of possibilities. So let's do this. Let's start with leather buttons. This is one place where we are limited by nothing but our imagination. Let's start right here. I've got a one inch round button. That's an eight to nine ounce veg, pro dye red with a satellite top coat. Now I use a one inch round hole punch for that. Here's the problem. It's an expensive tool, it's obscure, and I almost never use this except for buttons. But by not having that tool, that opens us up. Okay, so let's do this. Say we want a round button. Let's take just a one inch square. Let's clip that corner pretty heavy. Now let's come in and let's clip the corners on that. So therefore, I'm starting to get pretty round. If I slick that, that won't be bad. But because we don't have that tool, let's do this. Let's look at other options. Right here, that's a half inch English point punched on four sides, round in half inch on all four sides, but let's step that up. How about that? Let's punch that round in and then drop in a stamp in each ear. That's creative. Now again, we don't have that tool. Let's start with a square. So what I'm going to do here is take a round punch and I'm going to drop that. I'm going to go in about halfway on my tool. So that makes a pretty cool design, but let's step that up. Let's take that tool and go almost all the way in. Very cool. Up and down or sideways. Both is a nice design. Right here, same thing. I've taken my square and I've just used a round in punch. Gone a little bit deeper there. That may not make a great button, but it will do something very cool. And we'll talk about that in just a second. Same thing right here, but now I've clipped my corners with a round hole punch. That makes a pretty cool button. This is one of my favorites. Simply a cross design. All we have to do there is take a one inch piece of paper. Let's fold that down, make a nick in it. Let's open that back up. Now we've got a very symmetrical pattern. Again, sideways or straight up and down. I don't know how to say that, but either way, that's a cool shape for a button. If we have a chrome that we just love the color or the texture or the design, but it's just too thin for a button, let's take that, glue it onto a four to five, five to six, or maybe even a six to seven. Well, now we have a matching button for our chrome project. Now with that, we're talking buttons, but let's say we use that as our button but then we drop these in, drop in a single hole. Now we have bolt-on decorations that can match our button or simply stand alone. Well, okay, how do we attach this? We've seen these two projects before. Right here, I've got just a piece of lace and I've knotted that on the inside. Looks pretty clean and tight, but what I tend to like to do is drop in a second hole. So therefore I can pull that lace through, tighten that down, but also that's a nice touch very rustic, but also just the basic. We've got an oblong as a buttonhole, drop our button in and it goes right through the oblong. So again, all kinds of possibilities just with a simple button. Let's jump over to snaps. For those of us who are a little bit more new at the craft, but at the same time, those of us with a little more experience, a lot of us tend to avoid a Sigma snap. In my opinion, the one reason is because we've worked with a cheap snap. If we do that, it's not going to bite. But if we go quality, all the difference. Let's start right here. Line 24 snap. This is for our heavier weights. Six to seven up to maybe eight to nine ounce. Going to start to struggle at a nine to 10 or 10 to 11, but it's a good common snap. We've got four pieces. So we've got a cap and we've got a post. Naked back and our cap. Then we've got two female pieces. The two female pieces are the two that are going to bite. The point there is if we reverse those, it's no issue here, but let's go with the way it's most commonly done. So let's start right here. Going to take the naked back post, drop that through. 
Now, I like to have that hole a little bit snug. That's going to add durability to that snap. Let's take the flange on the inside, drop that in, and with our setter, it's a line 24 setter, make sure we've got the right setter there. Let's drop that right in that post. Now, you'll notice I kind of tend to hold this down a little bit when I set that. That's all we need. Notice that post rolled down in there very nicely. Now, it's spinning just a little bit. I don't want to drive this through my marble, but what I want to do is just to keep that from spinning. One more good shot. There we go. Okay, clean and tight. Let's flip this over. Let's take our cap, come in through our top grain, drop this in our, our largest indent on our anvil, drop in the flange on the outside, and I'm going to set that exactly the same way. There we go. Okay, not it's spinning just a little bit. Let's give that just one more. There we go. Okay, again, that post is rolled down in there nicely. That's going to set exceptionally well. So, easy enough on snaps. It's a good closure. Now, a line 20 snap, 24, line 20 is just a smaller post, smaller cap. So, this is going to be good for maybe 3 to 4 ounce, up to maybe 6 to 7 ounce. Sets exactly the same way. Same setter design, but it's smaller. So again, let's make sure we've got a line 20 setter or we'll crush that post. Let's jump over to our Sigma. Now with this, we're going to need a smaller hole and a larger hole. That's going to make sense here in a second. So right here, let's take this. Looks just like a rivet post. Let's come through the back. Now we've got this smaller piece. Let's drop that on there. We've got two setters here. So right here, we've got an inset on this setter. There we go. Okay, easy enough. Riveted down, riveted down nicely. Let's jump over to our anvil. I'm going to drop this in our third down. Now right here, let's come in from the back side. Because on this, we're going to circle around to make a snap. Let's drop our post in. Let's take our other setter, which has a protrusion there. Two easy shots. There we go. Let's see how that works. Look at that. Nice snap, easy to set. Again, quality, all the difference in the world. Now, let's look at one more because we don't ever think about this. Say we're going to make a keychain. I'm going to drop this in. What I want is a cap on both sides. I don't want this naked back on either side because we'll be able to see both. So let's do this. Let's take our cap, just like we did on our first strap, drop that in from the front, bring that through, drop in our female piece, back to our line 24 setter. There we go, okay, snug. Now on this side, let's take another cap, not our naked back, but our cap, Drop that in, and let's take the other female piece. Drop that in, line 24 setter. Oop, you know what? Let's keep that right there nice and snug. There we go, okay? So now I've got caps on both sides. We don't ever think about that, but we can certainly do that because we're simply riveting the two female pieces together. A great closure, and we never really think about this, is a concho. All kinds of cool designs. In fact, we have got some beautiful conchos. Okay, if you're new to leather, this is simply a screw back. We punch a hole, we drop it in, and we've got a gorgeous decoration. Makes a great button though. Right here, we can add it with a piece of lace, or right here, simply with an oblong punch. Now, two things. First off, I would say go with one inch or smaller. Makes it a little bit easier to close that. But secondly, Conchos can be concaved. In fact, these are extremely concaved. What I want to do is make a little spacer, or what I tend to call a donut. Going to punch a hole, drop in a round hole inside that. Now, you can cut that by hand if you need to. We'll never see that. But I'm going to drop that on the back. Now I'll screw that on. So what that actually does is gives me a little space between concho and leather, which A, for my loop, easy enough, but also makes it a little bit easier if I'm going through an oblong. This has been one of my favorite closures since we started selling these. It's the locks 
or LOXX quick release. I simply lift that tab and it releases. Press it back down, snaps closed. It's a good secure closure, looks great, but here's the best part, super easy to install. Let's start right here. I've got a flap, here's my, or a pouch, here's my flap. So let's take our larger post, our release, come through the front, and that's a 3 8 inch hole there. We can take either of the two flanges. They're both the same thing, both threaded. So I'm gonna screw that down. Now we sell a tool. My advice here, get two. One's gonna disappear immediately. But I can drop that in, tighten that down, and then on the back, let's look at this because what we need is we want that little post out. So let's drop that from the outside or from the inside out. I'm gonna drop the flange back on it again. And let's see if I can get this one to screw down. There we go. Let's use that tool. Tighten that down as much as we want. Let's bring that around. How easy is that to set? And it looks great. We've got an entire leather element on just making a leather toggle. So if you like the look of this, search that. But it's a great closure. First off, easy to make. No hardware required. There's our pattern. So we can really chew up some basic scrap that we most likely would throw away. But also color options. There's a bunch of ways we can go with this. Now, to attach this, we go the same way we did with our buttons. I can run that lace through so I can tug to tighten, or on the back, I can just knot this. Pull that over, close it, and you know what? We have got a cool little, simple, but very rustic toggle. Always looks good. Well, if we're looking for closure, then we know where to find it. But all told, I hope this will help those of us who are new kind of get a feel. These are not difficult. But on the other side, unlimited creative possibilities. In fact, we'll do another one of these because, again, we haven't scratched the surface. In fact, that may look familiar to you, but also, too, we've just set a snap. We have not gone into all kinds of ways to add a strap to that to make it very creative and our own design. I hope this is good information for you. Thanks for taking time to watch The Leather Element. Good luck with your projects.